My name is Pierce LaValle and welcome to my channel. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this before. Uh, this is uncharted territory for me, uh, but I'm really excited. This is going to be a pet YouTube channel. This channel is going to be full of my pets, pet care, um, terrarium, vivarium setups, and we might even do top five videos and stuff like that. Just a whole bunch of fun stuff. I basically created this channel um, so that I could have just a, fun, a good time. I've seen other people doing this YouTube thing with, with their pets and stuff like that. And I thought, and I love them. I love the videos. I watch Brian Barczyk all the time. I watch nerds videos all the time. Clint's Reptiles is another one. Snake Discovery, all those things. So I watch all these YouTube channels and it just looks so much fun to be able to make those videos and to kind of how they like share their pets and share their experiences and how they take care of their animals. And so I thought, you know, why not? Why not give it a try and just have fun with it? So that's pretty much the main like goal of this channel is just to kind of have fun. Um, I love showing off my reptiles to people. I love, you know, showing reptiles that people may have never seen before. So I just want to get some information out there for people who are, you know, are looking to buy reptiles or looking to get into the reptile keeping hobby. Also, um, I want to learn as well. I don't know everything. And so, I think this channel will be a good way to interact with other people in the hobby and to be able to learn along the way for myself because I'm constantly learning new things and I am constantly changing the way that I set up my you know, reptiles cages and the way I care for them. It changes constantly um, to, try to, to try to give the reptiles that you have a better life. Before I get into pulling out all my pets and showing everybody everything. Um, I did just kind of want to like, you know, give whoever views this video, you know, a background of myself because you kind of got to get to know me and then we'll get to the stars of the show. I currently live in Sacramento. I was born in Hayward, California. My parents tried to had to try to figure out ways to like keep me occupied and to, and to keep me entertained. And so, you know, you can give a kid toys and that, that goes, you know, that's fun for a while. I kind of wanted something more. Like I wanted that companionship um, of having like a brother or sister. My family always had dogs and cats. Um, and I ended up getting like a rat when I was, whew, I think I was like three or four. And one day my mom goes to pick him up and she's messing with them, playing with them and stuff. And she gets this really bad allergic reaction and like her face swells up and she turns all red and everything like that. And so it turns out my mom ended up being allergic to rodents. And so we had to give Spidey away. I was devastated. We had to give Spidey away and, you know, I wanted another friend. Like I wanted another companion. So my parents, you know, did some research and we found, we just figured, well, you know what, why don't we try to keep reptiles. We ended up going to the pet store and I ended up getting my first pet reptile, which is my box turtle, Franklin, and he is actually still with me today. So you guys will get to see him in a little bit. I'm 26 now. I've been keeping reptiles since I was about four years old. It's always been a love of mine. Um, you know, throughout high school, I went to college. My parents were kind enough to watch my reptiles for me while I was in college. So I didn't have to give any of them away. Um, and then I moved to LA, they, I, I took all my reptiles with me, the ones that I had. And at that time I probably only had about, I think maybe six reptiles altogether. Came back home, moved in with one of my, one of my boys, um, in Sacramento. Didn't really have the room to keep a lot of reptiles. I pretty much kept my, my collection of reptiles to a minimum. And then, you know, just recently last year, my roommate moved out and so it freed up a whole room. And so I just, my, dr my dream, my dream always has been to have a reptile room of my own and to have a nice setup where people can come in and check them all out and see things that they might not ever see unless they're in a zoo. I'm super excited to start this channel because one of my other goals was to be able to share it with other people and 
even though you guys might not be walking into the reptile room with me when I'm taking care of these animals, I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy these videos and enjoy, you know, the pets that I have. Super, super, super excited for this. This is this is awesome. I've been waiting for this day. I've been waiting to film. I've been so busy, but I've been waiting to film for a really long time so that I could get this out there because I want to start getting going on this. It's gonna be it's gonna be an adventure. I'm 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 super excited. I can't wait to see where this goes. So with that being said. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything else that I wanted to say. Um, we should probably get into the reptiles. Number one, the very first reptile I ever owned and my oldest pet that I currently own is Franklin, the box turtle. He's a three-toed box turtle. Um, I got him at this store in Vacaville, California. It's closed down now. It's called Planet Pets. He is my buddy. This guy, if there was one pet that in a catastrophe, I know I'm being, we're quarantined right now, we're in the middle of this quarantine stuff right now, um, in the middle of a catastrophe, if I could only take one pet, this would be the guy that I'd take. He's been through, he's been with me my whole life, he's been with me through it all, and I've learned so many different things while caring for him. I made a lot of mistakes, um, luckily, though, he's been able to last and been able to, to make it through, he's trying to get away from me right now. <laughs> Franklin, chill out. I will definitely make a ton of videos about this guy and his care and how his care has changed because I made a lot of mistakes with him and I finally think I finally started to get it down really good and I just absolutely love this guy. He is my favorite. Um, if anybody knows of, sorry for that, I didn't mean to scare you, buddy. If anybody knows of any uh, buddy who can trim down box turtle beaks, um, in the Sacramento area, let me know because I definitely need to get that done. Um, his beak is definitely too long and I want to sh shave that down. So if anybody knows anybody to do that, hit me up in the comments. But he's getting a little aggravated, so <laughs> I'm going to go put him back and we'll go bring out the next guy. So next, she's been eager to get out the whole time I've been recording these videos. This is Peach. She is my female panther chameleon and she is a doll i love her i got her about two or three years ago um, at the sacramento reptile show i bought her as a male which i'm kind of upset about because i paid extra because they thought she was going to be a male and it turns out she's a female so for those of you who don't know panther chameleons um, the males get the bright, bright colors like the red, blue, green, orange. Females tend to stay dull. She a, has a great personality for a panther chameleon. You know, chameleons, panther chameleons are pretty nice uh, in general, but chameleons kind of known to be a little bit, you know, well, a little bit attitude-y. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. As soon as I walk by the cage, she's like crawling up to the cage, uh, trying to trying to get to me and she's like cr trying to crawl, crawl up my arm. Uh, damn, I can't talk today. Um, let's move on to the next, next guy. Hi, Peach. I'll put you back home, okay? All right, so this next guy, oh, this next guy is Leo. Uh, he's my leopard gecko. I've had Leo for, I wanna say about 12 years now. He's in shed right now, so that's why his colors aren't really showing that great. I love leopard geckos. They're super easy pets to take care of. He is just a stud. I love him. A uh, little, little dull in the colors right now, but he's going to brighten up. And when he brightens up, I'll probably make another video so you guys can see him with all his colors. But he's a big boy, and he's pretty old. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next guy. This next guy is my white's tree frog. His name is Dunk. He is one of my older reptiles that I've had too. Um, a little chunky boy. <laughs> I've had him for about, I wanna say 14 years. I had another one, his name was Slam in there with him, in his cage with him, but he passed away a couple years ago. Uh, but Dunk has, he's made it through it all. He's, he's, he's persevered. I'm not gonna hold him for too long because tree frogs, I know this isn't a care video or an informational video, the tree frogs have permeable skin and the oils in my skin can kind of get into his skin and cause him some problems, so don't jump away from me. I love white tree frogs. I'll probably always have a white tree frog just because they're such easy pets, um, in my opinion. And they're so cool to watch, especially at night when they're all active and, you know, I try to, they, they can get overweight easily, so it's something you gotta watch. Croaks sometimes, that's how I know he's a male, because he croaks. Just an awesome guy. He'll, he'll change colors too, so, it, 
sometimes he's a dark brown, sometimes he's light green like this, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, that's Dunk. This is Charmander. He is my African Fire Skink. I got him from the East Bay Vivarium in Berkeley. You just saw him eat. He'll only let me grab him if I give him food. If that, if not, he will dart away from me. And if you know anything about these guys, you know how quick and how agile these guys are. It's really hard to grab them. Now, he's one of my more recent purchases. Um, I got him recently, uh, maybe only, only a couple months ago. I didn't even know these guys existed until I walked into this, uh, the shop and saw him there. Um, and then I went home, did some research for a couple of days and went back and, and got him because I had an open cage for him. Um, he's gonna try to crawl all the way up to my head. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Where are you going? The problem with having long hair is that these guys will get lost in it and then I'll never be able to find him. So I think he's, there he is. All right, buddy. Great beginner lizard, which I definitely will make a great beginner lizard video. Um, and he'll definitely, these guys will definitely be on there because they're awesome. I'm gonna try to find him and I'm gonna put him back and we'll move on to the next. Where are you? He's like on my back back. All right, so there's a couple, the next couple that I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I'm not gonna take out for various reasons. My bumblebee arrow frogs, um, just cause they're really small and fragile and they have really permeable skin, just like Dunk. And so they're not really the type of pet you wanna handle too much. It's not really good for them. So I'm just gonna try to try to get some clips of them in their enclosure. The other one is Cersei. She is my death stalker scorpion. She is one of the most venomous scorpions in the world. Even though I'm not too worried that she would sting me, because uh, she's really calm, even when I'm moving stuff in there or using a stick to kind of move things around, she tends to not really pay no mind to it. But just for safety reasons for myself, I'm not gonna take her out. And then Rango, my crested gecko. He's a baby still. Um, right now it's daylight, he's kind of sleeping. I really don't want to disturb him too much. I don't even know if I'll be able to get clips of him, but Rango is my crested gecko and I don't think I'm gonna take him out. So let's start with the arrow frogs and go from there. So this is Wasp and Daisy in here. Um, these are my two bumblebee arrow frogs. Uh, super cool. I got them set up in a bioactive enclosure. Um, I might have to redo it. This is the first bioactive enclosure I ever did. Um, didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> so, yeah, these guys are really cool. These guys are a pet that I always wanted. Um, and I finally was able to get some at the Sacramento Reptile Convention. Um, these guys are super active during the day. And just really awesome pets to look at. They're just, they're really display pets. Um, and pets that you really just have to sit and watch and admire because um, they really don't like being handled even though they can be handled they're just really fragile and small which is why I don't like to handle them so Cersei is going to be a little bit of a, a challenge to film uh, you can see there's a little darkling beetle in there but that is Cersei right there see if I can get the focus on her so that's Cersei she is a female God damn, I don't know why. She is a female Deathstalker Scorpion. And like I said, one of the most venomous scorpion species that there is. She's really cool. Simple setup for these guys. I'll definitely be making a video on care and setup for these guys. Really cool pets. Got her at the Sacramento Reptile Show. Um, super cool. I really just wanted to be able to say I have one, to be honest. I know that people say it's bad to do that impulse buy, but this was one of them that I was just like, ah, it's simple setup. I was like, I just want to say I have one. <laughs> so no plans to ever get her, but I ended up getting her, and she's awesome. She's really cool. Well, unfortunately, guys, I wasn't able to get Rango out. He's just really small right now. He's trying to hide and sleep. It's you know, bright outside, crested geckos are more nocturnal. I might put a picture um, up, you know, when I edit this video and everything, just so you guys can see what he looks like. Before we get into the snakes, um, let's show you the fish tank. 
I'm not a fish tank guru. I do not really know much about how to take care of live planted fish tanks. This is my first live planted tip fish tank that I've ever tried. It looked really good at first. Um, and then I had this one plant just like grow super rapidly and it covered like the whole top of the fish tank and it, for a while it looked good and nothing really, I didn't really think too much of it. And then all my plants started dying and I realized that it was because the plant was covering the whole top of the tank and there was no light getting down to the bottom. So basically all my plants died. So I had to take that big, that plant out and I haven't, I'm in quarantine right now. So I haven't really had a chance to go to the store and grab new plants um, and really clean it up and restart, basically start from scratch again. So this is what the tank looks like right now. It's definitely, you'll definitely see some videos of me replanting it, putting more plants in there and stuff like that. I don't know exactly how many fish in there I have in there. I think I have nine and then I have an eel and a freshwater eel and a crab, a panther crab in there. So let's check out the fish tank. Well, this is the fish tank. As you can see, um, not that many plants in there anymore. Um, I'm still trying to, still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, what plants I'm gonna put in there. Um, you won't be able to see the eel right now. He usually only comes out at night. And same with the crab. The crab usually only comes out at night. But yeah, the, the tank looked way better than this before that other plant basically took over and killed everything. So this is definitely a work in progress, but I am excited for what's in store with this tank. It's gonna end up looking really, really good. Okay, so now we're gonna get into one of my favorite parts of rep owning reptiles, and that is the snakes. I'm going to start off with my oldest and favorite snake. I mean, it's my oldest snake. I've had her since I was like six. She's like 20 years old. Um, how can she not be my favorite? So here she is. So this is Slithery, and she is a female corn snake. She is the second reptile I ever got. Um, ooh, whoa. And the first snake that I ever got. I absolutely love corn snakes. Um, the more you guys watch this channel, I'm sure she will be featured on it quite a bit. I think corn snakes are the best beginner snake to own and one of the best beginner reptiles to own. I know everybody says ball python, or a lot of people will say ball pythons, um, and they're great too, and they'll definitely be on a list, on the top of the list too. But for me, this is the first snake I ever owned. It's corn snakes are awesome. She's about 20 years old, um, and I actually didn't know she was a female until one day she laid eggs, and I have no males, and I have no other corn snakes, and she laid eggs and I was like, what the hell is going on? And I didn't know that snakes could lay eggs without uh, infertile eggs without being, you know, having a partner, uh, which I thought was really interesting. So I actually thought she was a male. Ah, oh, she's cutting my hair. I actually thought she was a male her whole life and come to find out she's a female. Of course, snakes are awesome because they're, they don't bite. They don't bite. Like you don't have to worry about a corn snake biting or being bitey um they're just super cool snakes super chill snakes um very active like if you're holding them you're gonna have to work a little bit uh, especially for new keepers so don't get intimidated by that i could hold her all day and she would be perfectly fine wouldn't bite me don't get too big but they aren't still aren't that small and their care is so simple i mean no, there's not really any humidity requirements and their heating isn't really all that. I mean, they can withstand very cold and very hot in terms of reptiles, not saying you want to crank up the heat to 100 or you want to turn down the heat to only to freezing. But, you know, they can withstand a lot. And I've made a lot of mistakes with her care just as well. I've made a lot of mistakes with a lot of my reptiles care. Um, and I'm constantly learning and she's been able to withstand it all. Definitely a must have for new snake owners, I believe. Uh, corn snake, for sure. They come in so many different colors. Uh, I eventually wanna you know, expand my corn snake collection, but uh, she's a normal and she is just, she's awesome. She doesn't get much better than this. I love her so much. Yeah, she is, she's, she's incredible. So corn snake, slithery. This is the first snake that I show you guys and let's move on to some other ones. So this next little guy, 
is my Mexican Black King Snake Phantom. He's still a little baby. I just got him a couple months ago from uh, Reptile Depot here in Sacramento. I love the color. I love the jet black of these guys. I had to figure out that that autofocus on here. Uh, the jet black is just awesome. He actually just shed today, so you can really see. Ah, he's biting me. So, I <laughs> uh, wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, you can see just the jet black on this guy. You know, they always said that you eventually you're gonna get bit by your king snake. I just he's never bit before. I never thought he would. Uh, I couldn't feel it though. It's probably because I was just holding slithery actually that he bit me. He's gonna get a lot bigger than this. Um, probably around four feet. Um, you can do it again, huh? You can do it again, aren't you? Hey. They haven't ate. They're eating. Their feeding days tomorrow, so they're all hungry right now. All my snakes are hungry, so I'll probably get a bit more. Oh, here you go again, huh? Look. Where is that? You are. You're trying to get me today, huh? <laughs> so yeah, Phantom Mexican Black King Snake. All right, guys. So this is Simon. He is my male spotted python. Male spotted python. And this guy's a little feisty. You're probably gonna see me get bit at some point in this video um, with him because when I got him, he bit the guy who sold him to me as he was selling him to me, telling me that he was an awesome snake that he's never gonna bite. And then the first three times that I held this guy when I first took him home, he bit me every time. Supposed to be really good pets because they're not bitey. Uh, maybe I just got one of the few bitey ones. These guys come from Australia. Um, and you know all Australian reptiles and wildlife that you get um, has to be captive born or captive bred here in the US. Um, well, at least for us in the US, uh, has to be captive born. So this guy is a captive born snake. Uh, actually, I think, yeah, all my snakes are captive, captive born, or captive bred, sorry, captive bred snakes. I just like these guys because they're pythons, but they stay super small. They, they, they look like pythons, they got attitude like pythons, um, they act like pythons, but they're just super small. So if you don't, if you want a python, but you want something that kind of stays smaller, even smaller than a, um, a ball python, one of these guys are great. And I got this guy from the East Bay Vivarium in Berkeley. He's a beautiful snake. I really, I really like him. Even though he's a little stinker and he bites me, has a great feeding response. Never goes without a meal. Hey, trust me. He never. He thinks my hand is the meal half the time. Kind of worked with him and kind of tried to tame him down as much as I can. And he's turning out to be a really cool guy. So, yeah, super, super cool snake. So Simon, the spider, spotted python. So next up. I have one of my newer additions. And this is my false water cobra, Naja. And what you guys didn't see is that when I took her out, I had to take her out with gloves because she is in her cage. She's really crazy. And when I grab her out of the cage, she's crazy in the cage. But once I grab her out, she's really calm. She calms down like this. I think she's just cage aggressive. And like I said, my snakes haven't ate uh, for a week. I feed them tomorrow. So this is a rear fanged venomous snake, which means she does have some venom, very mild venom. If I were to get bit right now, um, I'd probably have some swelling, uh, maybe a rash. Unless I'm allergic, nothing serious is gonna happen. This is about as close as you're gonna get to a venomous snake without having a venomous snake. Even though she is venomous, she's not as, she's not true venomous. She's not a front fanged venomous. I don't know, anyways. This false water cobra, she's gonna be, she's gonna get to be like nine feet long, maybe, um, could get up there. She's a hypo, um, so she's not the true natural colors. I got her from the Serpentarium uh, in Lodi. Great place to get animals, to get reptiles. The, the customer service there is awesome. I just started holding her without gloves, to be honest, because she's a little crazy. I was a little sketchy when I first got her and now, you know, I just kind of decided to suck it up and try to hold her without gloves and I just started doing that probably maybe not even a month ago. I'm working with her, you know, every, almost every day to try to get her to calm down. 
so that I have a better experience and she has a better experience uh, when I'm handling her she doesn't freak out as much. Uh, right now she's super calm so I'm happy about that. You'll notice I'm watching her a lot more than probably I was with my other snakes. Uh, that's because I still don't completely trust her, but we're getting there. You'll be seeing a lot of her. She is definitely one of my favorite snakes that I have. So you'll definitely be seeing a lot of her on this channel. So this is one of my newest additions. This is Legolas. He is a male Dumeril's boa. These guys are from Madagascar. I got him at the same reptile convention that I got Rango, which was in Daly City. Was actually going to that one uh, with the intention of getting a, you know, a BCI boa or a BCC boa, you know, one of the Central or South American boas. And then I went there and I saw this guy and I saw how beautiful he is and the, the beautiful colorations he had. And I just had to get him. I changed my whole plans up. Um, I already had the enclosure for him and everything, but... I decided to go with this guy instead, and one of the best decisions I could have made, because he is so calm, he's so chill, really awesome to handle. I love the way he grips me, like grips me. A lot of my snakes don't do that. Uh, wraps around my fingers to hold on. This is a male, so he's not gonna get as big as the females get. Really quickly fell in love with Dumeril's boas after getting this guy. Um, definitely wanna get a female in the future. This guy's probably gonna get to be about six, seven feet long. And they're really girthy snakes, so he's gonna get pretty thick. Love the way he feels. Their scales feel, I don't know, they just feel different than a lot of other snakes. They're, they're, it's super smooth. It's, it's more like skin than scales. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Great feeder. Uh, I only had trouble with him maybe like the week after I got him. He wasn't trying to eat, um, wasn't trying to eat frozen thawed. And then I tried the next week and he was straight on frozen thawed. He's one of my favorites. Legless the Doom Rolls Boa. This is. Cleopatra, my blood python. She's actually an ivory blood python. She's only about eight months. I got her from GX3 Reptiles here in Sacramento. They're awesome there. Um, definitely go to that spot all the time. It's right by my house. And they actually specialize in breeding blood pythons, I believe. And I think they got a couple right now that are for sale. Blood pythons are one of those snakes that was on my list, like on my bucket list for sure. I, I wanted, I knew I wanted to own a blood python at some point. The only thing that was holding me back was their reputation. They just had a reputation or have a reputation of being very aggressive, very bitey snakes, very defensive snakes. And for their size, I mean, that's kind of scary. You know, if you're a beginning, a beginner snake keeper, um, to have a big snake like that get, you know, be aggressive. I saw one in GX3, I saw two actually. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna get one. So I ended up getting her. They said she was the nicer of the two. She is a puppy dog. I mean, she is super, super nice. Never tried to strike at me. Um, has never been aggressive in any way. Never shown any signs of aggression. Let's me pick her up all the time. I handled her a lot. Blood pythons have skyrocketed to one of my favorite, one of my favorite pet reptiles to own, favorite snakes to own. It's like a ball python on steroids, you know what I mean? It's just like a big fat python, ball python on steroids and they don't get as big as the reticulated pythons, as the Burmese pythons, as your anacondas, as your boa, they don't get as long as your boa constrictors, but they still get a good size to them and, but it's still handleable and manageable for one person. She's gonna be the star of the show probably. She's gonna be featured a lot on here because I love her so much. Everything that I thought a blood python was, she's proved to be wrong. I mean, not aggressive at all, uh, not bitey, great eater. I mean, I know they, they, they're they known to be great eaters, but just an all around awesome snake to have. So lucky to have her. And uh, yeah, you're definitely gonna see Cleopatra quite a bit on this channel. All right guys, so I thought I was gonna be able to get him out, but I was able to. You might see me get bit right now. But this is Genie. And this is my Vietnamese Blue Beauty Rat Snake. He is my newest snake that I have. I just got him about a week or two ago. And I don't know why it's not focusing, he's getting a little too close to the camera. And he is a Vietnamese Blue Beauty. And he's a little, a little defensive. But I think with time, oops, I think with time, 
I'll be able to tame him down a little bit real fast. I got him from the Serpentarium in Elk Grove. It's going to get to be about seven, eight feet long, maybe even nine. I heard there's been reports of even 11 feet. So he's one of my youngest snakes, but already one of the longest ones that I have. He has beautiful color. He's a beautiful snake. And his colors are only going to get better and more blue. Once he's out of the cage, he's actually pretty calm. He's being really good right now. Um, hopefully that lasts. Don't mind the sounds in the background. It's just my TV. I didn't close my door. <laughs> so yeah, that's Genie. So that's it. You guys have seen all my pets, uh, all my reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, fish. I'm gonna do top five videos. Uh, care videos, setup videos. It's just gonna be a good time, you know. Like I said in the beginning of the uh, of this video, um, I'm just doing this for fun. I want to share information. I want to learn and gain information because I don't know everything. Um, and the best way to do that is in a group. And you know, there's other people on this platform that are more knowledgeable than me. So I want to learn from them. And if I can give out any knowledge to help people, then that's what I want to do. So this is all gonna be for fun. We're gonna have a good time. You guys are probably gonna see you know, my reptiles grow with me. You guys are gonna see me get new reptiles. Well, who knows? Who knows where this is gonna go? That's what's so exciting about this. I don't even know where this is gonna go. So if you stumble across this video, if you liked this video and you like this video, you know, subscribe, like, comment, you know, I'm, I'd love to have conversations back and forth with you guys. This is going to be an awesome experience. So, hope you guys had a good time today, and I'll see you next time I make a video. Peace. It's my favorite my favorite part of my uh you all right i really had a good time uh filming this today um uh, God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it, where is he? You know, that it would be a, a fun thing to do. Um, Thank you, buddy.